The state of Washington contains seven volcanoes which are classified as active, the last of which erupted between 2004 and 2008. However, Mount St. Helens is not the only volcano which has erupted quite recently, as there is also a towering glacier-covered peak which erupted approximately 324 years ago. The peak in question rises to 3,213 meters or 10,543 feet above sea level, and due to the fact it contains more than a dozen glaciers, is referred to as Glacier Peak. Along with Mount St. Helens, Glacier Peak is the only volcano in the state of Washington to have produced multiple powerful Plinian eruptions during the last 20,000 years, some of which were larger than the infamous 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. As a result, much like Mount Rainier, Glacier Peak has a large potential lahar risk area since much of its glaciers could melt during a future eruption, placing up to 67,000 people at risk of being inundated by lethal lahars up to 71 miles away from its summit. The Glacier Peak volcano can be found in north-central Washington, where it is centered 65 miles east-northeast of the city of Seattle. Like other volcanoes in the Cascade Mountain Range, Glacier Peak exists due to the offshore subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate underneath the North American Plate. The subducted oceanic crust from this collision then experiences partial melting, rising upwards to create magmatic intrusions which goes on to form a chain of volcanoes. If you look at Glacier Peak from satellite, you will note that it has an incredibly rugged appearance. Although this is partially due to explosive volcanic activity, it is primarily due to numerous glaciers which have carved out large portions of this mountain. Due to the numerous glaciations this volcano has experienced, much of its early geologic record is not well known. What we do know is that this volcano began forming sometime between 600,000 and 200,000 years ago, as this marks the age of its oldest radiometrically dated lava flow. These earliest eruptions were remarkably similar in composition to its more recent eruptions, creating mostly volcanian eruptions which interwove thick, slow-moving viscous dacite lava flows with layers of ash. These early eruptions built a central, albeit rugged volcanic cone, which was soon carved away by multiple cycles of glacial advance and retreat due to the ongoing ice age. The layers of ash were far more susceptible to erosion than the harder dacite lava flows, resulting in the vast majority of ridges going away from Glacier Peak's summit representing high points on past viscous lava flows. As Glacier Peak continued to grow, with vents largely aligned along a north-to-south trend, not all of its eruptions originated from its summit. Three such eruptions during the last 50,000 years created a series of separate cinder cones and spectacular Strombolian eruptions, and placing lava flows that followed the low points and glacially carved valleys. The youngest of these vents is the White Chuck Cinder Cone, which may have formed in a moderately explosive eruption around 15,000 years ago. After glaciers begin to retreat after the last glacial maximum, the most energetic period known in the lengthy history of Glacier Peak occurred. Specifically, between 13,073 and 9255 BCE, a total of six highly explosive eruptions occurred, four of which were Plinian in nature, reading in on the Volcanic Explosivity Index as a 4 or 5. These eruptions not only caused ash to accumulate in three states in a portion of British Columbia and Alberta, but also generated pyroclastic flows that reached as much as 6.5 miles away from its summit. These pyroclastic flows melted large volumes of glacial ice, creating lengthy lahars that would inundate areas up to the edge of the Pacific Ocean. The largest of these eruptions emplaced six and a half cubic kilometers of tephra, five times larger than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. After a long pause and eruptive activity, Glacier Peak's eruptions resumed around 6,000 years ago, going on to produce six eruptions in the time since. Five of these eruptions built lava domes that partially collapsed numerous times, generating numerous pyroclastic flows. The most recent eruption took a break from this pattern involving no lava, but instead explosive activity involving expanding steam and volcanic gases in what is known as a phreatic eruption around the year 1700. 
While Glacier Peak has not shown any signs of unrest since then, there are still reminders that underlying magma exists here due to the presence of multiple hot springs on its flanks. As a result of the many future hazards a future eruption of Glacier Peak could pose, the U.S. Geological Survey assigned this complex as a very high-threat volcano.